Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about price manipulation from Star City Games at pre-orders and how not to get tricked. So we're looking at a card. It is a decent card, but is it $35 and out of stock? How can it be out of stock when there are none in stock? How do they come up with the number of how many they're going to open? How many boxes they're going to open? The answer is it is unknown. So what they do is they sell 10 at a price. Oh, it sold out. Let's increase the price. Oh, the next 10, they, it sold out. And suddenly we are at $34.99 for a rare, a non-Shockland, non chromatic non <laughs> Lantern rare. Now we haven't seen all of the set yet, but I can tell you there's no way that this card is $35. A rare and a standard heavily printed set cannot hold that price, ever. Now, let's talk about other interesting cards. I took these two as an example and then I will show you the other prices, which in my opinion is even more ridiculous. There's so much hype around this that I like the set. Don't get me wrong, I like the set, but I'm here to tell you with very few exceptions, Chromantic Lantern being a guaranteed exception, and the Shocklands, this entire set after rotation will be worthless. Pennies. How do I know that? Well, look at Ravnica, look at Descension, look at Return to Ravnica, look at Gatecrash, look at Dragon Maze, which is the best example. Price manipulation is not funny. When you have a crappy nightmare demon that's $15 and quote out of stock, that is the definition of price manipulation. During pre-orders, we see a lot of this because there is no supply. So price is determined on demand and supply. There's actually no supply. Any supply is hypothetical. Now let's take a look at some of these other crappy cards. People are telling me that March of Multitudes is a good card. I don't believe it. I really truly don't believe it. Uh, it is not Sphinx of Revelation because Sphinx of Revelation does something kind of neat where it draws you cards and gains you life and you're actually a control deck and you need both of those. So don't get me wrong, I, I like to set I just don't feel like any of these prices are even remotely close. Normally, you know, maybe you divide by half and that's what the price goes down to. But these car prices are just so hyped. The only one exception I could see to justify this would be if there was very little supply. Uh, as it could be that there was no supply of this due to people wanting to hold back. Wizards of the Coast wanted to, you know, have a good selling set with a good expected value. But I, I doubt that. They just gotta make their money. So is Ral is it Viceroy worth $19.99? No, it's probably not even worth like $9.99. He's not even worth $4.99. Is Vraska $24.99? No, blank no. Like none of these prices like pre-order hype. I make this video just for a record of how much people have been hosed. Because people are buying. I don't know who they are. I don't know why they would do this time from time again. But Star City Games would not have these prices if people were not buying at these prices. And even at these prices, Star City Games is saying, no, for Assassin's Trophy, we can get more than $35. For a rare printed in a mass set, in a standard mass set, which is actually you can buy the set from directly from Wizards of the Coast. And then you get the Planeswalkers with it. Alright. There is no way any of these cards are worth what they are. I, the majority of these cards will be bulk. That is true of every set. The majority of those mythics will be something called a bulk mythic. And this Star City Games obviously knows what that is. Because they have a separate buy price for a bulk mythic. Now, this is all to say that you should not buy pre-order. There is not a single pre-order card. Lyra was very unique and special because 
I mean, Lyra was Lyra. I looked at Lyra and I said, hmm, that card's actually kind of low. When I look at this, it makes me puke because people are being taken advantage of. Price manipulation is very high. Now, you might be like, oh, well, it's not just Star City Games. It's TCG Player. It's Channel Fireball. It's Card Kingdom. Yeah, when you can make money, you can make money. There's no supply now. Lots of demand, no supply, so we just have fake numbers now. A mission briefing is another $15 rare. So are you telling me in one set we have five Shocklands, all about $10, and then we have Chromantic Lantern, oh, let's say about another $10. Then we have a $35 rare Assassin's Trophy and a $15 rare mission briefing? These are non-foiled, right? Blank me. I mean, come on. Like, how unrealistic is uh, is the expected v- expected value of this set so far based on the cards we've seen? It's got to like, be like $250. Why would anyone ever sell you a box if that was the case? Therefore, it cannot be the case. A lot of this is this BS. And normally, like, I'm not as mad. I'm very... The hype is out of control for this set. Like, it is just rampant and out of control. Like, there's no way for me to say it, except when you have Mausoleum Secrets at $7, this card is not even worth 70 cents, give it a year. It won't even be on the... uh, it won't Nakumiba is kind of an interesting one because I do like Nakumiba and it is played in dreads but it's not going to be worth that much because it is a reprint I'll just go ahead and say like these prices just don't make sense to me and they should not make sense to you and therefore you should not go out and buy them ever at this price now a lot of you will say what about that one speculation what about that one lyra that can take me home and make me a ton of money very risky maybe there's one card that is undervalued but the reason it is undervalued is because people are underestimating it a ton and you would be the one person the reason lyra was the price he was because people didn't like her if they liked her she wouldn't be at that price she would be at you know 50 dollars, right so you're not going to be lucky enough to be that one person it's just not possible. I also heard about the uh, Goblin chain, chain. And yeah, that was an interesting one. But so many people told you, oh, you know, I was going to buy 100 copies at a dollar or 500 copies at a dollar. No, they weren't. They didn't buy it. If it was super obvious, they would have bought it. So whenever you listen to MTG Finance, especially pre-order specs, like take it with a grain of salt. If this person actually believed, they would not tell you. It would go against, as I said about the Falia, like the worst thing I can do when I'm trying to spec on a card is inflate the price of every additional card I want to buy. Because I don't want to buy one or two or four. I want to buy 400. The worst thing I could do is double her price when I only have 100 of her and my end goal is to get 400. Worst thing I could do. I mean, look at this. Emery Soul of the Accord. It's a free dollar card. I mean, no. No. <laughs> these, card, I, 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 these are cards. I mean, there might be one card in this set that just explodes in price like a Teffy or a Lyra. But that's it. And it will not be the one that you expect it to be. And then after a week, after two weeks... Everyone and their grandmother is going to tell you and your and everyone they, that will listen that they predicted this one card that went up, this Teffy that went up in price. No, not likely, not likely at all. And this is uh, what is it called, survivor bias or something, where the survivor is telling the tale, and that everyone got hosed is not going to tell you they got hosed. So the only people talking are the people who actually didn't get hosed. And then therefore everyone thinks that everyone did a good job and bought the one card that went up in price because the people are too embarrassed to admit that they all bought, you know, let's say they bought Assassin Trophy at $35.
Unless this car goes up to $70, you're not going to buy list this out. Now, I will say I love Chromatic Lantern. It is idiot's gold. Uh, therefore, if it drops under $4, yeah, I'll pick them up and trade all day and even buy buy a bunch because there are there's never a scenario where this card, no matter how many times it's reprinted, it will be worthless. This will always be a good card. The rest of this stuff, even Assassin's Trophy, it looks good. But I don't know that for a certainty. I would much rather buy the Chromatic Lantern foils than the Assassin Trophies for the same price. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.